we have sinned. And our sin created a breach. And in our arrogance, we had the audacity to say, we will tell you where you're welcome, if you're welcome, when you're welcome, and where you can function and where you can't. You are living in the day where you are observing as literally as it could possibly be seen, Psalm chapter 2. The leaders of this world taking counsel against Christ, the Lord and his anointed, saying, you're not going to rule over us. But he laughs and makes his pronouncement. This is my son I've given to him. And you'll either kiss him or I'm going to crush you and break you with a rod of iron. He then presented to you a pager in the dream. My life verse is in Isaiah 22, 22. Authority, governmental authority, this is the trans, my translation, uh, my interpretation. Governmental authority to open doors. Nobody can close. Close doors, nobody can open. That's what he's given the church. The keys of the kingdom to open doors. Nobody can close. Close doors, nobody can open. And for me, that's been my assignment. Isaiah 22, 22. So then in the dream, he says, he presented to you a pager and said, when you see the number 22, 22 on the pager, always answer your cell phone, even though there will be no caller ID. In other words, I'm going to call you and give you prayer, so I'm a prayer requests on the pager. I'm going to, on your phone, but you won't see an ID there. So when you see this number on your pager, answer but the reason I shared with that with you is the ancient markers. So I'm going to skip one for the sake of time, but let me give you another dream Clay sent to me. Chuck Pierce and I are doing a tour right now. We're going to about 23, 24 cities in America. Chuck's a prophet. Most of you know who he is from Dallas. He and I minister together frequently. And uh, the Lord has given us an assignment to gather all the state, to go to all the states again, but not to go to all 50 literally, but to touch all 50 by going to 20 some regions and gathering the surrounding states so that we touch all the states. And uh, so we're doing that. And while we were in New Jersey, we had this amazing meeting, one of the most significant meetings I think I've ever been in. And so that night, after the service, God gave Clay this dream, and it says, I dreamed last night you were presented a skeleton key. And that would have been in New Jersey. If you look up the word skeleton key, you'll see that it's referred to as a master key. He said, then Chuck prophesied into the atmosphere and a keyhole appeared. You inserted the key and turned it until a doorway was opened and a voice spoke from the spirit. Welcome into an ancient pathway. Reserved for this time. It's an ancient path. But the entrance into that has been reserved for now. And then the angel said, here are the resources needed to complete the turning of the nation. I'm just going to say it this way, some of the resources we need, some of the things we need to turn this nation are not in front of us. They are behind us. Because you must tap into original purpose and intent and covenant and destiny 
It's because it's not like, it's not what do we want for America, it's what did he want for America. It's not the American dream. It's God's dream for America. When God's dream for America, which was in essence, quite simply, to become a beachhead and trumpet of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Frankly, somebody said earlier, there's only two nations where they really in cov have a covenant with God. Israel raised up to give us Messiah, redemption. America was raised up to trumpet that message more than any other nation in the world, in history. And when, when they landed on Cape Henry in 1607 and planted the cross on the beach, and Robert Hunt said, from these shores, the gospel will go forth to not only this land, but to all the nations of the earth. He prophesied the destiny of America. So it's not the American dream, it's God's dream for America. And our founders knew that this was about more than us. That's why they put appeal to heaven on the flag that flew over the battlefields in the Revolutionary War, a phrase from John Locke, who said, when you've done all you know to do, and you, still, and you can't get breakthrough or justice, there's always something you can do, and that is appeal to heaven. And they took that phrase, put it in the Declaration of Independence, and then created a flag, George Washington, that flew it over the battlefields and the ships, and America was born under a prayer movement because they knew the only way we can defeat this British Empire, the greatest empire in history maybe, with the most might, muscle, money, and we have none of those things. It's laughable to think we can gain our independence unless, unless God is in this. And, though, and Winther was right when he said, we shall be as a city on a hill. No less than seven presidents since then have quoted that. They've tried to revise our history. You can revise it, but you can't really change it. Because John Adams said facts are stubborn things. And we were raised up by God for specific purpose. And the whole secularist movement and humanist movement and liberal movement, it's not just because they want to sin more. They don't even know why they're doing it, half, most of them. They don't know that behind all of this are principalities and powers trying to weaken this nation and pull us farther and farther from our God-ordained destiny and purpose because he needs us for this great harvest he's about to bring in. And I'll just say, I'll go take it to, to this, this, this far. There are times when God just simply will not do it until that connection happens. And he said, when you do it, you can move on. But you will not move on, Jacob, Israelites, four or five hundred years ago, until you realize this goes all the way back to what I told Abraham. This is not just about you. This is about something I did way back in history. And until you connect with that, you're not going anywhere. 